Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today we're going to talk about oversampling. So what is oversampling? Oversampling is when you take a signal, we've sampled it according to the laws of the universe, and from the last video, you may be quite confused about this idea of sampling now because you might be like, well, what is actually happening? There is a conversion that takes place that will move things to a 16-bit signal. So, okay, from the previous video, you may be confused things do get converted over to the correct signal when they get into your system. The whole reason we do that oversampling, multi-bit modulation, sigma, delta, thingamajig, is so that we can capture the signal more accurately and linearly. Once it gets in and it's in the digital realm, we want to generally convert it because it's much easier on our processing. So you're still dealing with the 24-bit, 16-bit, you know, whatever your system is using. And why... So, okay, so now that that's out of the way, because... I didn't really make that too clear, but just so you know, it doesn't stay. DSD does stay like that. And it's much, much, much heavier on your processing. It You can still process it. And there's a whole, if we got into DSP, you'd understand what it has to kind of do to use something like that. But it's much easier to use a signal like this. So oversampling, what it'll do is let's say once we've got our signal back to our more conventional understanding, because now we're dealing with the original sort of set of rules, not this weird one bit, low bit stuff. Uh, we what we do is we take it and we put additional samples in there Why do we do this? We do this because processing uh, We want our system to be able to manipulate the audio data It's one of the great benefits of digital audio and sometimes we run into issues if our sample rates not high enough For example, if our two points always lands here and here as we're sampling our signal It never reaches near the peak value of our waveform and let's so let's take that for example so it reaches those points and then we send this into a compressor and we put the threshold right at the peak well it'll never receive a sample value that says compress me even though our signal well right below the peak it'll even though our signal says this needs to be compressed as a result we need we have an issue because our sample rate's not high enough to get accurate processing so what we will do is we will add additional samples we will add it for the duration of our processing. And then at the end, and this also helps avoid uh, aliasing as well because you can alias in your system. So you need to also oversample for those reasons. A lot of your plugins will do this. So with our compressor, you know, it needs to somehow know. So what it does is it says, ha, I know what I need to do. I will simply oversample the signal before it reaches me. And then I will process it with all the oversampled. And because we've oversampled it, It'll be much more accurately represented. There will be points for these peak values for our compressor because it uses sam the sample points. It doesn't use the extrapolated data. And so now it has that and it can process it. And then once it spits it out, we are good to go. And it will downsample it. It'll take it and actually decimation, which I believe is when you remove some multiple of the uh, sample rate. I believe that's what that is. But anyways, it'll downsample it. Now, this oversampling thing actually happens. It's in, you'll see it in a number of plugins. And I have another video on it that I believe I did pretty okay. I may link it in the playlist after this video. <coughs> so, may link it in the playlist. We have uh, oversampling here. You'll see it as a thing. And you'll see you can go to times 2 up to times 64. Some can go much higher, like 200 times 256. And that is often used... If we want to convert back to uh, low bit stuff. Now I do want to add on a few things on this video. So that's oversampling in a nutshell. That's what it's used for. And it is much heavier on your processing. Because sometimes it will leave it in there. Until it goes through another process that will remove it. So now you get the idea that holy crap. When we send things through plugins and stuff. I thought the thing was staying at 44.1 the whole time. When I started. But I have learned our bit depth. Our bit depth also changes. They will add bits. Because you need more, if you're going to do binary math, you're going to need more bits to represent your math. Just like how when we go from 10 to 11, we need another space to put stuff. Well, when we're adding stuff, we're going to need more bits. And so as a result, we get way crazy bit depths. We get like 40 bit bit depths. And we get, and over here, we get uh, sample rates that go up like crazy. And then we bring them back down and we do all this stuff. So hopefully you understand that these things aren't concrete things. They're made to meet the requirement of what we want to do at the stage it's at just because it's shifting around does not mean we lose any quality it's literally we do this stuff because we want it to be perfect so just so i know these are not constant things so anyways we have this oversampling that's what's going on 
Uh, that's that's the jazz I wanted to say about the bit converters. I'm probably going to talk about dithering or noise floor next because that seems to be the next logical thing. And just so you know, at the very end of our system, we bring it back down to 16-bit and the correct sample rate so it can meet data requirements for the consumer stage because they're not going to be doing any of this weird crap we're doing. So it makes sense to put it in the optimal delivery format for them, which is why we do all this weird stuff, but they don't ever mess with it. So that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Reverse. Reverse.